Hi, today we're going to talk about why uh, are the Russians so great at wrestling. First, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. It really helps my channel. And uh, let's get to it. So there's no doubt that Russia is highly dominant in wrestling, right? As well as all the former Soviet republics are also quite dominant wrestling too. Um, and yeah, so someone has to ask why, right? And this isn't to say that the US or other systems aren't dominant because we have other dominant systems that aren't uh, Russian based or from the Soviet Union, such as US wrestling. I mean, top of the top, Iranian wrestling, Cuban wrestling, Turkish wrestling, Japanese wrestling, Indian wrestling, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Even Korea has a, has a very strong wrestling uh, uh, program. But of all these, there's no doubt the, the big bear in the room, no pen intended, is uh, Russia. So why is Russia so dominant uh, in comparison to other countries? And why does it always uh, dominate or, or at least is at the top of the, the medal count? Um, and there's several reasons why. So first, let's go to the first reason, which is uh, Russia has extremely deep roots, like wrestling has extremely deep roots in Russia, okay? Now, this doesn't mean that other countries don't have it, but you have to understand that in Russia, it's very common for fathers, grandfathers, great-grandfathers, great-great-grandfathers, and lots of generations of men in a bloodline to all come from some type of wrestling uh, background. And it might not be freestyle wrestling or Greco, but it's a type of wrestling, okay? Now, just to give you an example, just from this old Soviet um, uh, republics, not just internally in Russia, you have a lot of different uh, cultural uh, wrestling and grappling styles that have definitely influenced the Russian wrestling system today. Uh, one is, uh, for example, Chidaoba and uh, Hridoli from Georgia. You have Koch from Armenia, Gulesh from Azerbaijan, uh, Koras, which is a Tatar wrestling style, which is in Russia, Kurash, an Uzbek wrestling style, Alish, uh, a Kyrgyz style, Gores, a Turkmen style, uh, Kushtingiri, which is a Tajik wrestling style, Kures, Ka a Kazakh style, Khuresh, which is a Tuvan style from Siberia, and Tranta from Moldovia, Moldova. Now you notice a lot of them have the same kind of Gulesh, Gulesh, uh, Koras, Kuresh, because it's all kind of related. Now each style has a little bit uh, variations in how they would score points or allow grips, etc. But all these types of um, cultural wrestling styles were always inside the Russian character and all the um, countries surrounding Russia. Okay, and it, it produces a very interesting uh, area of the world for wrestling. Now, the next we're going to talk about the Russian and re wrestling system. There is a big difference between Russian coaching and, uh, let's say, American coaching in other uh, countries. Um, and I think the biggest difference where I would say, as a wrestling enthusiast and a guy who practiced wrestling, I was never a great wrestler, but I was a good wrestler, and having a father from the Soviet Union is uh, seeing that Russians have like an ultimate focus on technique. Now, this doesn't mean that like other st systems like America doesn't have a focus on technique. But for example, let's say America, they'll, they're very technical. I mean, if you get a guy like Jaden Cox or uh, Kyle Dake or David Taylor or from the old school, like uh, any of the, the old guy, uh, the Four Horsemen, if anyone knows that, put in the comments. Let's see if you know your wrestling. Very technical guys, but there was also a very big physical element. And the Russians are physical monsters, but they're extremely technical from all aspects, from, you name it, from uh, grip fighting uh, to getting uh, reversals, etc. Very uh, unorthodox takedowns. Their, their technique is another level. And even, in, uh, even uh, Dan Gable um, said the same, I think it was on Joe Rogan, he said that, you know, the Russians are just technically ahead of us. And uh, there's, a, there's a really thing. There's a real uh, logic to it. Russia has a very intense wrestling system, 
okay? It's very developed in technique. Um, they produce incredibly, incredibly uh, high uh, amounts of wrestlers who have good technique. And yeah, for example, so you have John Smith in the States, uh, Dave Schultz and uh, Les Gutches, you know? These guys were on, I think even the Russians would say, wow, these guys are on par with us technically, and, and yeah, for sure. But they don't produce the same amount of technical monsters as uh, Russia does. And I think where it is, is that there's a lot of emphasis on creativity in answering um, problems associated with opponents. For example, let's take Jordan Burroughs. Jordan Burroughs, one of the best wrestlers of all time from the US, multiple uh, time uh, Olympic champion, Olymp uh, world champion, etc. Probably is one of the best, if not the best, double leg takedown of all time. Amazing wrestler. But to, to a lot of people's surprise, uh, Gadoev from Russia beat him, okay? And the question is, how did he beat him? How could you beat a guy like George, uh, like uh, Jordan Burroughs? And it was definitely through development of technique and creativity in solving the problem, which Russia is definitely known for. Um, another thing that Russians are really good is the long-term uh, development of a, of a wrestler, okay? Unlike the U.S., or other countries where, you know, in elementary school, you have a certain wrestling coach and then junior high, you have a different coach in high school. And then you go to uh, hopefully college, you know, collegiate and a different coach. In Russia, generally, it's very common to stay with the same coach or one or two coaches during your whole career. Um, and this enables the total development in terms of long-term of, of an athlete. So, for example, if a guy knows uh, his uh, athlete, if a coach knows his athlete since age, let's say five or six, ten, they've developed every single aspect, one by one, of this uh, youth and into an adult, etc. And you can really develop an incredible, an incredibly technically sound wrestler that for his body type and his wrestling style and his mentality, it's always been the same focus on developing. The American system, in comparison, is kind of like a constant sprint. And the emphasis is always, most of the time, on hard practices and full gas training, which definitely shows its um, benefits. I mean, when anyone wrestles an American, you know, they know they're in for a hard uh, fight. I mean, any wrestler, it's going to be a hard match. But usually, generally, when you talk about like very physical wrestlers, it's going to be the US uh, and Cuba. But Cuba, we'll talk about another time because that's an entirely different uh, wrestling system that's an interesting in its own. Um, so, yeah, long term development. That's where the Russians are very different than the US. Okay. Another thing is they re Russia really emphasizes the knowing total package wrestlers. So what does that mean, total package wrestling? Now, generally there's more of an emphasis on knowing, understanding both throwing as well as leg attacks in comparison to U.S. wrestlers. And this could be a lot to do with U.S. Um, wrestling having a, a huge emphasis on folk style and collegiate wrestling prior. Different... Um, different um, rule set than freestyle wrestling. So that has to be taken in notice. But in Russia, the throws that they have, as well as the entrances into the throws and using sometimes their legs and setups with throws are definitely, in my opinion, much higher level than we see in the States. Uh, and what happens is you start having a much um, large, more total package in your wrestler on the average wrestler. Of course, if you look at the elites, you know, elite wrestlers and elite wrestler, but in Russia, generally they, they can do everything and they can do it very well and surprisingly technically at the highest levels too. There's another thing too that I call it the street cat, street cat versus the house cat, okay? So life in Russia, no doubt is much tougher than in the West. A lot of the guys come from areas um, that don't have proper heating, not the greatest food. Uh, food can be scarce at certain times of the year, harsh winters, <laughs> and even uh, regional conflicts. And they make for a tough mentality. And it's not saying that they you don't have this in uh, the States, because 
you know, if you go to like a Midwest um, US, like some of the states there, you get some really tough farm boys and you put them into wrestling, they become tough as, as it gets. But in Russia, there's some type of mental toughness that they have where they just, just want to succeed, you know? And they do it through discipline a lot of times, right? Not through just hard work, but also discipline. Like, to have, you know, for example, if you take a guy from Dagestan or Dagestan, as they say, and they have regional conflicts since the 90s, you know, and it's a lot of, lot of uh, violence in that area. You're getting a tough guy, you know, he's not, or a tough woman, which I haven't seen women wrestlers from Dagestan so much, but uh, you're getting a tough, tough wrestler. And that wrestler, when he comes to uh, to the match, he's going to give everything and he's coming to kill, to destroy, you know, and he's going to do it technically, right? So the street cat is a house cat. I'm not saying that U.S. Uh, wrestlers are house cats, but there is a different thing. It's a little bit more comfortable system. A lot of guys have cars or, for example, they get back to their very nice life where they order pizza at the night, not when they're trying to cut weight, but, uh, you know, it's a much more comfortable life. Uh, another thing, too, in Russia is you have superstar status that these wrestlers get, okay? Unfortunately, in the West, wrestling just doesn't get um, the... Um, the fame that you would see in Russia. Maybe now because of UFC, you know, MMA, you see a lot of wrestlers like coming up to top, uh, to top like DC, etc. Uh, Daniel Cormier. But it's still not the same as um, mainstream superstar status of you see in Russia. For example, if you say Sadulayev, he's on TV everywhere. Gadoev, he's on TV. Anyone who's a uh, wrestling star, they're really thought as a wrestling star. Also, wrestlers at the top level in Russia Actually, if they win the Olympics or World Championships, they can get some very good financial benefits, right, from the state and from their local community. And they're literally looked at like gods, okay? Like, wow, this guy is a champion, etc. So that superstar status, uh, definitely, especially when you come from, like we said, the street cat where you have nothing into becoming a superstar, not only a champion, it definitely has some bearing on the mentality of an athlete, because now, not only can you be a champion, but you could be like this star, etc., this success story. And that's something they have in Russia that unfortunately they don't have in the States. I hope it gets better in the US. And I think it is, especially with uh, wrestling's emphasis in uh, MMA and most champions come from wrestling background, as well as in Jiu Jitsu now, there's a big influx of wrestling into it. Uh, and But it's not like uh, Russia. In Russia, they're really. Uh, they really stars, you know. Um, now, final thoughts. Every country produces wrestlers, and some of the top wrestling countries have amazing talent. Um, the, and this isn't to say that one wrestling style is better than another, because at the end of the day, the American approach produces outstanding wrestlers. I mean, really top quality. But the uh, Russian approach does as well. And it's different. And with Russia winning so many world championships and beating the best uh, wrestlers around the world, one must ask, why are these guys so great at wrestling? And is there something to learn from this? And of course there is. Now, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. I'm trying to uh, grow my channel. If you see me tick, I have Tourette syndrome, so I'm not uh, high on drugs or something. I just have a, a disease where I can't help ticking. Uh, and until then, enjoy and have a good day.